Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real-world self-publishing and small business experience with you. So let's get started with today's show. Now, the title of today's show is, Are You Talking to Me? Let me tell you how I came up with this. Well, um, we had a little staycation here in Chicago this summer, and so we decided to go to the Fermi Lab, which is um, out in the far west suburbs of Chicago. It's really for a lot of physics nerds, and uh, it's the uh, Particle Accelerator Laboratory. So uh, for those of us who like things like Star Trek, and I follow a lot of tech blogs and science blogs, I find it really interesting. And so we wanted to go on the tour, and they had a tour that was going to be after a public lecture that was titled Ask a Scientist, and it was going to be on the holographic universe. And I thought, wow, that sounds cool. You know, I'm into the Matrix and, you know, all those kinds of uh, cool sci-fi things. So I was really interested in what this was all about. So we get to the lecture and uh, we sit down and the gentleman who was presenting was extremely intelligent. I mean, it is way beyond my level of understanding. <laughs> it, I, I don't really know how I want to ex, uh, describe the presentation. It was, it certainly wasn't for colleagues on this guy's level. I mean, it would have been too simplistic for them, but for people like me and the general public, <laughs> um, not so much, you know, <laughs> they came to the end of the, the lecture and they said, well, does anybody have any questions? And I felt like saying, heck no, uh, you know, you lost me after uh, you said, well, the restrooms are located across the lobby and you turn right. I didn't understand anything after that. So it was just way beyond my level of comprehension. And so I guess I would have appreciated to have a little more, I don't know, maybe where they would have said, who is this for? And that got me really thinking about how we present our books to our market. If someone looked at your book description, would they know who it's for. Also, if your title, and, and this is probably less so for fiction, which can have some more artistic titles, but for nonfiction, it's absolutely critical to answer the question, who is this for and what am I going to get? And I consider your book title subtitle and your book description are like the ingredients label for your book because then people know what to expect and so um, i guess for this lecture i didn't know what to expect and maybe i expected something different <laughs> and so i think it really is imperative that we take a step back and figure out who our books are for. And I think this becomes even more critical if you are writing children's books. And I know I have a lot of authors in my various networks who are attempting to write children's books. And I think it's really critical there that you define clearly what grade level this is for uh, uh, because I, I think a lot of parents, uh, I see a lot of parents wanting to, to write books and sometimes they don't really, you know, they're writing for their, their children, but children progress intellectually pretty fast. You know, the, there's a, a vast difference between someone who's at a first grade reading level and someone who's at a third grade reading level even though the span is only two years. And so, you know, there's tools you can use like the Fleisch-Kincaid 
uh, reading or grade level uh, tests and things like that, or you can get a good editor. And I think that's another tool that we can use, whether it's children's books or adult books or even, even fiction, is to have someone else, either a beta reader or an editor, uh, look at your book and say, oh, okay, who is this for? And then ask them, who do you think this is for? Sometimes you don't even, don't even tell them who you think it's for. But ask those people, like your, your editors, or your friends, or your beta readers, who do you think this book is for? <laughs> and you might get some really, really surprising answers. And um, I've noticed that when I do a review of a manuscript for an author, that's one of the first questions I ask. In fact, it, before I even start their manuscript, I ask them, well, who is your audience? And a lot of them have no idea. <laughs> a lot of them say it's for everyone. You know, like this this lecture we went to, you know, it was it was open to the public, but it wasn't for the public. And you know, I think authors have that same problem. You know, they they're just saying, well, it's it's for everyone. It's open to everyone. Yeah, it is. But it doesn't mean that that's your ideal reader. And um, I always know that when I encounter an author who says their book is for everyone, I know it's for no one, and I know that they haven't even put any thought into it. Or they're just hopeful that if they say it's for everyone, it will be, it will just hit someone who might be interested. And I, I just don't go with that. I, I consider that kind of like cold calling, <laughs> which I think is the stupidest sales technique ever. And, you know, I've had to do it at various times in, in my career as part of, you know, employment or whatever. And I just think it is the stupidest thing because you just go up and down a list or something and you just hope you hit something, you know. Um, and that's just not the, the smart way to market. It's very inefficient. And it also ticks off readers, like if it's for your book, it ticks off readers uh, to not clearly define who it's for because they'll get something and then they'll be very disappointed and they'll be, they won't be reading any more of your work, that's for sure. They might even leave a bad review. So, um, you know, I think, I think it really takes us, uh, it, it's important for us to step back and say, who is this book for? and what will they get out of it? So those are the two basic questions that you need to answer. So I hope you have found this tip helpful as you start uh, thinking about more writing projects that you might have going on. And if you did find it helpful, please wander over to the Apple Podcast app and uh, leave The Heidi Thorne Show a nice rating and review. And of course, while you're on the Apple Podcast app, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss one of these episodes with helpful tips. And if you're not in the Apple universe, uh, you can listen to The Heidi Thorne Show on uh, Stitcher and Podbean. You can listen to it on your Alexa using the AnyPod skill. And if you like the video version better, you can get that on YouTube. You just have to go to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get all the episode notifications there. Now, if you want to uh, see more about my books, uh, my books are available on Amazon. You just have to type in Heidi Thorne. You'll find my author page. Go to my author page and all the books that I've done are there. So it's just all in one place, easy for you to see. And if you rather have the audiobooks, they are also available on Amazon, uh, but they are also available on the Apple Books app and Audible. Don't forget to share either my books or podcasts with your friends on social media. And if you want to connect with me, my website is very simply HeidiThorne.com. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I'll look forward to talking with you again in the next episode. And in the meantime, have a great day.